Next up, we are going to have Jeremiah Reed, who's going to be talking Juice Your Turns. Uh, Jeremiah, you might know as a developer of a bunch of small roguelikes like Golden Crone Hotel, uh, Dumazid, and Deadface. And yeah, really excited about this. I think juiciness is something that is often uh, not our first thing we think about with traditional roguelikes. So really excited to have this. All right. Welcome aboard. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So okay. I will hand it off. Um, yeah, so this is a talk about juice. Uh, it, it's not something we typically think about in traditional roguelikes, but I want to convince you that like it's a good fit. Uh, this presentation is playable at juicerturns.com if you want to follow along now or later. I have to jump back and forth between these tabs to see the questions, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go. Yeah, so I, you might I will know me. Say, don't worry about chat questions. I am on top of it. So don't worry about distracting yourself. We'll, we'll have okay. questions at the end. Just Great point. Here. Thank you. Okay. Um, you might know me from some of my seven day roguelikes. I made eight of them. I expanded one into a larger project, Golden Crone Hotel. We'll talk a little bit about that today. So, Juice is kind of a nebulous game dev concept. And I think it helps to ground it in something that like we all know and love, which is fruit juice, right? And if you think about fruit juice, what do you typically think about? It tastes good, obviously. It feels good. It has a good mouthfeel. Probably the most important part is it's responsive. Like when you bite into a, a piece of fruit, like it kind of bites back. You get a response, you get interaction. It tells you the thing you're interacting with is alive. It doesn't feel inert or dead. It's very fun and it is messy. So this is one of the best quotes I've found on this topic. Juicy things are things that wobble, squirt, bounce around, and make cute, little cute noises. It's sort of a catch-all phrase for things that make a game more satisfying to interact with. Juice is typically auditory or visual, but it doesn't really need to be. It's about maximum output, output for minimum input. So two important points here. One is that, like, yeah, juice is typically graphics. And I'm going to talk about graphical techniques mostly in this talk, but it could also be mechanics. It could be just feedback to the player. It could be text. It could be anything. Um, and the second point is it's really about bang for your buck. It's very much an economical thing. Another good quote, juice amplifies interactivity by providing excessive amounts of feedback in relation to user input. It is superfluous from a strictly mechanical perspective, but turns interacting with the system into a more pleasurable experience. I think that's good. I would push back about uh, superfluous because sometimes you can even have what I could, I would say that you can have mechanics that are juicy, um, but otherwise this is pretty good. So let's take a look at a real juicy game, right? No, this is not. This is uh, Golden Crone Hotel, the seven day roguelike version that I made in one week in 2014. Uh, I think you'd agree it has like no animation, no juice, no polish, and that's okay because I made it in a week. But like over the last seven years, I've continued to work on this game. And I think I've learned a few things about juice and animation. I'm going to kind of combine some of those topics together because some of the animation stuff is going to be like really low hanging fruit. Um, so in this, like this is by no means the juiciest game or even traditional roguelike you'll ever see. But like there's a few techniques you might notice in this GIF. One, like the characters move around smoothly. They hop around. There's a uh, bump attack animation. There's a slash animation. There's damage numbers. There's screen shake. The enemies fade out to red. So there's a few things going on. But I have a little bit of regret looking back. It's like, why didn't I add some of these things like early on, like in year one or two, it would have drawn in a bigger audience. I didn't add some of these things until later. And I didn't even find out some of these techniques until like literally working on this talk. And three reasons, really. One, I, I didn't know some of these things existed. Um, I was kind of surprised to learn about them slowly in reference games. Two, I thought they were going to be a lot harder than they they turned out to be. They, they turned out to be pretty easy to implement. And three, like I I didn't think they were always a good fit for traditional roguelikes because Juice is typically associated with action games. So that's what I want to try to convince you of today. That's why it's called Juice Returns. Um, it's a good fit. It's easy. And I want to show you some of the techniques. So now I do want to look at some really good examples of Juice. Uh, the one that inspired me to do this talk, actually, is Act. Agatha in Absurdia. This was a seven day roguelike from last year, and I was very impressed by it. You can just take a look, and it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of bounciness and squishiness, and it's just fun to like play and look at. Um, I also like was inspired this year to add some juice techniques to my seven DRL that I never considered before. But when I saw that this was done in a week, it's like, wow, like if, if you can do this in a week, like this is really achievable. Now I want to make a distinction, for lack of a better term, between on-grid roguelikes and off-grid roguelikes. So if you go back like 
the earliest roguelikes were targeting terminals, right? So the only thing, if you're doing that, that you choose when you're making graphics is what character to show, uh, what color is the character, and then what is the background color in a small rectangle behind the character. So all you're doing is choosing those three things for a, a rectangular rectangular grid of, of characters. That's it. But the question is, like, can you make a really great looking game or a juicy game within those confines? And I think Brogue is an example that you really can. Like, this is an amazing looking game, even though it's an ASCII. It, it's on a terminal. It um, the, the water effects and like gas cloud effects are really cool. Another similar example, this is ripped straight from the trailer. So there's tiles in it. But this is a one to one mapping with with the ASCII, I believe. Um, the explosions in Cogmine look great, right? And um, the, there's there's really like, there's no, compared to some of the examples I'm gonna look at later, there's no rotation, there's no scale changes, there's no offsets or anything. It's all just like, you show the sprites and that's it. And But within that, you can do like a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Fidel Dungeon Rescue, the, this next couple of examples are a little bit less traditional, but I would highly recommend this game. This three second GIF is like a masterclass in adding juice to your game. There's like just so much going on. Even if you just study the, the words level up, there's there's like 10 different things going on with the animation. And, and even mechanically, it feels good because when you level up, you get all your health back, you get an etched to heart. So just study this and, and you'll learn like so much. Another slightly less traditional example, Crypt of the Necrodancer. But even though it's, it, it's kind of a real time game in a sense, if you don't play the Bard, um, Graphically, it looks exactly like a top-down, uh, turn-based, grid-based traditional roguelike. So any of the lessons you learn from this, you can map it directly onto your game. Um, I learned a lot from Crypt of the Necrodancer. I kind of use it as a reference point because it's it's got just such great art and and there's so many things going on. Not shown here, but like I would consider the shopkeeper to be a good example of juice. Now some more traditional examples. Dungeon Man's very very juicy game. There's and this isn't even like one of the best examples, but there's projectiles, there's blood, there's uh, damage numbers, there's screen shake. Oh, Sproggy Wood, uh, very cutesy, bouncy, juicy game. This one has a interesting rotational screen shake. If you look closely, that I don't see in a lot of other games. Um, Jupiter Hell got in this recently. Amazing game. Uh, not even shown here. My favorite, like juice, juicy mechanic is reloading your gun. To me, if you have like a shotgun or a revolver, you have to put the bullets back in like one by one. And that something about that feels really great. But in this GIF, you see explosions, you see screen shake, you see destructible physics. It all comes together um, to be very impressive. If you notice, the last five examples all use screen shake, which is a core technique. And here's an example that doesn't use screen shake, but has a really cool aesthetic hack. I, I like how when you attack the monster and kill it, like the bones are flying everywhere. OK, so we've seen like some really great examples of, of juice and, and some really great looking games, great artwork. And so the first thing you may think if, if you're developing a roguelike, you're, and most, it, it might be fair to say, um, or my guess would be most roguelikes are, are made by single uh, except for the, like the larger open source ones are made by single developers, single programmers, and they may not all be artists. And you're thinking, I'm like all that amazing art, I can't do that. But that it's kind of myth. That's not really what Juice is about. You might think back, like even old games, like um, in simple games, this is Final Fantasy 1. This is a sprite sheet of from Final Fantasy 1. And this was made 34 years ago. And it's like, oh, look at all that art I've got to make. This is ridiculous. I can't do that. Um, but if you're a little clever about it, you could do the you could do something much simpler. Like you would have one uh, sprite for each character. You could have it side facing like a necrodancer and flip it, um, or you could just be more clever and do ASCII. And ASCII can look really great, like we've seen. So this is I this is kind of analogous to the the myth of the Juicero, right? The Juicero was initially a seven hundred dollar consumer device that cold pressed juice supposedly, and you look at this and you think, wow, I, I can't really afford the delicious benefits of juice because this is so expensive this is out of my price range um but of course that's that's bs because as it turned out like all it all this thing was doing was emptying these packets which you could do by hand so the reality is that juice is cheap juice is coded in not drawn in it's really at the end of the day a programming technique if you can interpolate between two numbers you can juice so uh these are the kind of things you would interpolate the scale position rotation and color um, so basically, like Juice is all about animation, all about taking one value, one property, and changing the value to something else. Um, for the most part, uh, little aside here, like when I was 
I've been a web developer most of my career. And like many years ago, there was a popular library called jQuery. And jQuery could do all these amazing animations with like one function call. It could fade things out, fade things in, bounce things around, change colors. And I always thought that like, wow, that's a lot of code that has to be backing that because that's so complex. And while doing this talk, I realized um, like if you're doing it, especially in a dynamic language, that's like 30 lines of code. It's very, very simple. You just take a property on an object you look at a target you want to go to and you just slowly get to that target. That's it. That's animation in juice. So that there's two, uh, there's lots of different types of animation uh, easings that you can do that will get you between two values. But the two I really like are linear and exponential. So basically you just have some target you're trying to get to in some um, starting position. Like let's say you're trying to move a character from tile A to tile B. That's the delta of the distance between them. And you're trying to get that down to zero. And then over time, you're just getting closer and closer. And if it's linear, you're going at a constant velocity. And if it's exponential, it looks more complicated, but it, it's actually pretty easy to implement because all you do is like shave off 10% of the delta every turn, 10%, 10%, or, or whatever value is appropriate. And that turns out to look really pleasing to the eye because you go really fast towards the target initially, and then you slow down as you get close. So given all that information, there's one uh, caveat or one rule that you absolutely must follow. That is, do not block the player from playing as fast as they want. And when I was initially um, discussing having this talk, like I had a lot of people that thought, like, no, 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 this is this is not a good idea, or, or or like I don't really like juice or whatever, because in their mind, and this is associated with juice, is is slow gameplay. And I've heard that Dungeons of Dreadmore is one of the worst offenders. Although I did learn that you could speed up the animations quite a bit. Um, it's like you press a button, you wait for the animation, press a button, wait for the animation. And the reason, there's a lot of reasons for this, but like none of them are really strictly necessary. There's no reason at the end of the day that you should stop a traditional roguelike player from mashing the key and flying across the screen. That's one of the coolest things that you can do. And having that flexibility is, is one of the staples of the genre. So there's no need for that to block them from doing that. Um, th there's one thing you should consider that will help with this when you're, you're trying to do non-blocking blocking animations. Every animation should be um, considerate of the time between frames. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is just if you have uh, a frame rate that's kind of choppy, uh, your animation will be choppy if you have like consistent animations that, that always animate the same amount. So if you, if you animate a little bit more, if it takes longer or a little bit less, if it takes less time between frames, that will be more appropriate. So if you skip a frame, your, your next animation should basically animate twice as much as it normally would. And the really cool thing, and I don't think I've ever done this until this talk, but it was it was amazing, is that once you have all your animations uh, using this time system, you can control time and lie about it. And you can either, you can use that for debugging, because a lot of times you'll look at these animations and they will look kind of off, but you won't really know why. So you can slow it down and really pinpoint what's going on, or you can use it for dramatic effect, or you can use it to speed up your animations for to not block the player. So... With that, the power of juice is yours. The next thing I want to do is show a little demo. Uh, I Again, this is playable at juicereturns.com. I should say there is going to be sound and music at one point. So um, hopefully the the moderators can uh, make that not super loud. If, it, if it's super loud, we'll, we'll see when we get there. Um, but anyway, I've got a simple roguelike here, a simple ASCII roguelike, and I want to um, see if I can juice it up a little bit. So this game has like attack, um, it has projectiles, even though they're not animated. You don't really see what's going on. Doors, you can walk around. There's field of view. It's basic, simple stuff, right? But like that's enough to make uh, a, a small little game. So the first thing that we want to do is that we want to... Th these colors, hopefully, you're not agreeing with them. They look kind of awful. So we can just desaturate the colors and, and choose a better color palette. Um, so basically, just take some time to think about your colors. It'll look a lot nicer. So a little comparison one and two. I think that looks better. Very simple thing you can do. It's just very subtle. You can rotate the screen a little bit. It makes it look less static. You can, um, going back, like this is what the, like the, this goblin here is attack, it's going to attack me and they walk towards me, but they do it in a very jerky way because there's no animation. So if you keep track of all the movements between tiles, uh, you can slowly animate toward uh, each one of those. And you want to keep track of them individually because if, if you do it all in one go and there's many movements and you, you animate all of them together, like a monster going around a corner will go diagonally, which you don't want. But now this monster will just smoothly move towards me. But there's one problem. If I move around, the camera is, is really jerky. So we can fix that by considering the player's 
uh, animation as well, adding that to the camera, and now the camera is smooth. But there's one problem I have with that, not a huge problem, but it looks a little stiff. So what we can do is we can slowly follow the camera as a player is moving around. And it, it's very subtle, but it doesn't feel quite as stiff. Now, th this one's some of these techniques are not going to be appropriate for a game. Uh, juice in general, some of the techniques you may think, oh, they're, this is a little too cartoony and too bouncy for my game. If you're making a serious game. And that's OK. Like, Take from this what you can. Uh, in my game, you literally drink blood off of the floor, so it's a little bit um, ridiculous and, and an appropriate fit for juice. So in this, you um, when the character moves left or right, they flip left or right. And that might be uh, not a good match for ASCII. That's up to you, but like I think it would be a good match for ASCII. Now, if you want to make it, you want to go a little further, you can animate it. You just this is just a scale thing, changing the scale from one to negative one slowly. Uh, at least in, in the library I use, that's what it was. Kind of has a neat Paper Mario effect, I think. Uh, now, this is really like one of the most important parts of the talk. One of the things I got from Absurdia is that like this is a very simple thing, but if you just add a little bit of bouncing to the game, uh, it, it makes it feel really great. So the character, it, this is basically a principle, a classic animation principle. I, I think there's it's called the 12 uh, principles of animation from Disney or whatever. The first one is squash and stretch. And, and basically what that means is it's very exaggerated, but when your character goes to jump, the first thing they do is they crouch down, so they get short, and inversely, they're going to get wide, then they go to jump, they get tall, they get skinny, and then it keeps going like that, kind of in a loop. And and what you can do is you can continue having them bounce even after even after they like land on the tile. Well, there's no hop, there's no uh, vertical movement now, but even without that, I think this still looks okay. Now we can add a little hop, and it really comes together. And we'll slow that down. I've got some time controls on this, so we'll look at it at like a one eighth speed. So, yeah, maybe we'll slow it down even more and do that again. Um, but basically, the character first, you look for them getting short, then tall, then short, then kind of bouncing over and over again. And and the the Z position is just handled by a parabola. That's that's very simple. And I think this this these two techniques together will do a lot for your game. Okay, so. This one is also very subtle. Uh, when your character moves, they there's a slight lean to their movement. Uh, let me slow that down uh, and move once over. But like in, instead of just being flat, they just lean in the direction that they're moving. You can do it a little bit more dramatic if you want. This one is interesting. Is is that if you jump in real life, you don't instantly like go in the direction that you want. First, you have to crouch down. You have to launch yourself through the air. So that's what this kind of represents. It's also a technique of animation uh, called anticipation, I believe. So in this case, the character, before they actually move to the next tile, there's a small delay. And that when, once I speed it up, I think you'll kind of notice it gives everything a very like sticky, like bounce, really like bouncy feel, where things like pop between tiles, depending on how um, how high you make the the delay. So look, look at that in, in real time. It's a little subtle, but it, it definitely makes a big difference. Now here, uh, yeah, going back to the, the previous uh, slide, there's a problem with this. This goes back to the, the blocking animation. If I hit right twice, my character only moves once. And that the reason may be, I, I want to let my animation play out because I made a beautiful animation. Well, I'm telling you not to do that, basically. I, I don't recommend doing that. Let the player play as fast as they want. So basically, if I hit left twice, I, I move left twice. So it's, it's very simple, right? And now um, I can just run across the screen. Uh, <laughs> the, the rotation is a little silly. Um, wow, it, it's very silly. But, but I can run as fast as I want across the screen. The only problem is I have to wait for the animation to catch up because it's still playing at a constant speed. So what I do to solve that is I just double, uh, for every outstanding animation, I double the speed. And it gets pretty ridiculously fast. Um, but within like about twice the time it would take to normally move, I can move a dozen tiles across the screen and play as fast as I want. Uh, this is very just a little fun thing where I go into this room and there's some trees and they, they bounce around and shake whenever I walk through them. Now, the combat so far has been very static and ugly. So what we're going to do, we're just going to add a, a little bump attack where the characters m appear to move into each other's tile uh, when they attack. And that's pretty effective, I think. Now, here's another, like, what I would consider core juice technique, screen shake. You saw it in many of the examples. It's really important. Um, all you're doing is, is changing the x, y values randomly. And you, you might not always notice it if you're playing a game, 
but it's actually like really, really makes the text feel much better. Now here's another, I'm gonna show you a few different types of screen shake. Uh, this one, I was inspired by Crypto the Necro Dancer because I was in Golden Crone Hotel, I thought my attacks didn't feel very satisfying. And I don't know if this is actually implemented this way in Crypto the Necro Dancer. I kind of, it kind of felt like it was, but what I do is instead of randomly moving uh, the, the camera all around, I just move in one given direction of the enemy. And that kind of feels like you're like, you're leaning into the attack and coming back. Um, look at that again, like this. I think I think that feels really good, at least in my game. Um, I'm, I'm liking it. Here's kind of a funny thing. I don't know if this has ever been implemented anywhere, but like uh, whenever the enemy attacks you, the camera rotates back and forth. It's kind of like you're getting slapped around. So that's that's kind of fun. And then we'll just add a little, in addition to that's why, we'll actually change the rotation and shake the rotation whenever we get hit. Now, in addition, classic video game trope, when your character gets hit, they flash white. And every game, regardless of what you're doing with Juice, you need to have damage numbers. So I come and attack enemies. And, and one fun thing is to, if there's a crit, I just like to double the size or, or make it more prominent. Here, I'm using the same animation system I use for the monsters moving around to have a, a projectile move through the air and get animated between two tiles. And then also, um, I'm like rotating it so it goes in the direction of the enemy. Now, so I got this from another talk, which I'll link later. But basically, one cool juice thing you can do is just have the player's actions have more of an impact on the world or, or be more visibly present. So, I mean, if the character is running around this dungeon and attacking everything, like, shouldn't there be some evidence of, of what they're doing? So in this case, I have, I have little corpses. Uh, oddly, I've made it so like you have to attack the corpse to walk through it, and then it's kind of just in the background. Don't know if that makes any sense, but it's kind of fun. Now, why don't we make it a little bit more ridiculous and have enemies fly through the air um, whenever you attack them? So, right, one more time. Yeah, that's kind of fun, right? All you got to do is, is have the animation, but add some rotation to that. Now, um, Here's where I'm going to have some sound, and I, I, don't, I have no idea how loud it's going to um, it's going to sound. So just let me know if, if, if that's ridiculously quiet or loud. And then I have some music coming up also. So I have sounds. Sounds are, are a great juice thing because you know they're not hard to make. There's free sounds everywhere. You can use uh, a program called BFXer um, to make your own. Uh, I added a little drip sound for the movement, which is kind of just funny for a, like a really bouncy game. Oh. How can I forget? Uh, you got to have some pew pew sounds if you're going to uh, have a gun. Here is a, here's a mechanic, like I mentioned. From, I just stole this from Jupiter Herald because I think it's the most amazing thing. And, and it's probably been around for ages. It was probably in Doom RL as well. But you attack a monster, and then you have to individually reload your bullets. And it feels really satisfying. So it's just an example where a mechanic can be juiced too. Uh, and then if something important happens, you want a little bit of drama in your game. So my character, if they get killed, like fly through the air and there's some sad music and a game over screen. Uh, now, okay, so going back real quick, at some point you're going to have to make a decision if you're adding juice to your game, like what's in good taste and what's in bad taste and what's an appropriate fit for my game. Um, let's forget all that for now and go way beyond bad taste and just continue adding things because why not? It's fun. It's a talk about juice. So in this, I'm, I've just done something ridiculous where I'm like pushing the walls away from the character. And um, I don't know why I'm doing that, but um, it looks it, it's just fun. And when it, also, whenever you see new tiles, they kind of fly in from off screen, and there's a little bit of animation there. And it just makes it really fun to uh, just go around the level. And I'm pew pew pewing a little bit. So, OK. And, the, and the, my favorite part about this is when you walk through uh, a hallway, it looks like you're like climbing through the intestines of a large beast. And it's just a little ridiculous. OK. Um, we'll add some music. Again, please tell me this is too loud. If you're doing a roguelike, you should probably have slow music so the player can really take their time and make decisions. But like, you know, you don't have to go that way. You can have a fast paced game. So add some, you know, let's have some juicy music. Uh, now let's just get totally wild and just start bouncing everything for no reason. Even the even the corpses are going to bounce, right? This doesn't make sense, but like we're having fun. Even the trees are bouncing around. We're all yeah, like we're all having a good time. 
Uh, one more slide, and uh, there's a warning that this has uh, some flashing colors, but we just want to go as wild as possible. Uh, and it may make you nauseous if you get seasick easily or whatever. Um, so just a warning. I'm going to change now. Uh, yeah. So now I've got like the whole thing. It's like pulsating and there's colors and um, and, and and like, yeah, maybe this is too ridiculous for your game, but like I, I had fun making this. Okay, that, that's it. That's all I have. Um, just a couple more slides for, for references, but this is Juice, essentially. I hope you can, e either if you're a developer, that you can use these techniques, or if you're a player, maybe you can recognize some of the techniques in the games that you play. And yeah, here's some references. The first three links are like kind of landmark talks on this topic. They, If you're going to do any of this, I really would recommend that you watch them. Uh, Art of the Screen Shake, really solid from Van Blier. Four hour game design from Cactus. That's not actually four hours, like 30 minutes and choose it or lose it. And the fourth link is a uh, kind of like a like a paper on game fill and juice with over 200 sources. So it's pretty solid if, if you want to get a little academic. One of the authors of this I saw on Twitter this week um, that they along with, I believe, Mike Cook um, made some made some uh, prototype project, which actually automatically adds juice to a game. And that kind of blew my mind. Uh, yeah. Um, so time for questions. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm so hyped. Uh, but I think that the drama ad was my personal favorite and I hope that, uh, a lot of people are going to be taking that back to their own roguelikes. Um, cud, I, I know that you're in there, Brian and Jason. <laughs> Add the drama. But yes, we have some questions along with a lot of uh, yelling of pew pew and juice, juice, juice. Awesome. Uh, have, have you ever seen a juicing technique used inappropriately or gone horribly wrong? Uh, so, I mean, the first, I would go back to the blocking animation because people told me like, uh, dread more. So I, I've not actually played it, but that that's one thing to avoid. Um, I think I heard people say maybe like teleglitch was a little bit too much for them, but like, uh, again, if if it fits your game, add it. If your game is cartoony, it can be a little bouncy. If you're making like infra arcana, maybe these are not necessarily good techniques to use. Yeah, limit the juice a little bit. You don't want to be juice bloated and super slow. Uh, another, and that was, uh, was a question from uh, Travis uh, from Hyper Gardens. What's the most challenging aspect of juice from a programming perspective? Does it ever come up that it interferes with the game logic or kind of makes things harder in that way? So, okay, one thing I didn't add to this talk, which, um, this was all just prototype for this talk. One thing I didn't add because it was too difficult is having sep having basically like a logical flow of the animations. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this well, but, um, you know, in a rogue, like you attack and the monsters attack you at the same time. But if you wanted to, you can show you attack and then the monsters attack you. Um, or like if I, f if I shoot my projectile, like I fire like an arrow, right? And it goes to the through the air and it lands on a monster. If you let the animations play out, but you don't synchronize as well, the monster can move away from the arrow before it's actually landed. That looks kind of weird. And I, I will tell you those things are present in Golden Crone Hotel because they're just really hard to work out because you have to kind of schedule things. Um, and, and it's a lot of work and I just never, never tackled it. Right, so that kind of syncing up of things independently doing stuff that would have to kind of animate together. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Um, Sapphic Linguini has a question. How do you feel about juice in more strategic resource managing games? Uh, I think it would, like, even if, like, the things you have, you've seen may, might not work for you, like, the UI, add some, feed, some feedback to the UI elements, buttons. Um, if there's, like, if you unlock something, you know, it should flash, it should look good, it should, basically, this is about polish. And I don't think anyone can argue that their game has enough polish. So I don't know if I play a lot of those games, but I don't see a reason why it wouldn't fit. Right. And I think that uh, last question, also from Sapphic Lady, what's your favorite fruit juice? <laughs> oh, uh, I guess I I'll go that with... that was an easy one. <laughs> I guess I'll go with pineapple, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. well choice. I know you can get apple juice in the social space, so go find, <sighs> go find your juice. 